Hello fellow nerds and book lovers. Welcome to Red Cooley's book review. I'm Red Cooley and today we're going to be going over Callie's War, another book by John Ringo and Julia, Julie Cochran. Uh, it's a spin-off series in the Legacy of the Aldenata. came out in 2004. If you uh, listen to it on audiobook, it's another book done by Mark Vitor. Uh, very dramatic, deep voice, does really good for the military science fiction. Really enjoy uh, listening to him on the audiobooks. Uh, Callie's War takes place about 40 years after the Postling War. If you've read the, the start of the uh, Legacy of the Aldenata series. And uh, at the end of that, the previous series, she, uh, everybody thought that she had died in a nuclear explosion. And she's taken into the Baden She, which is a shadow organization, you know, set up to overthrow the Dar Hell, the, the Dar Hell's maniacal rule. Uh, standard plot, uh, overlying plot, uh, background. Uh, it works, it's really cool. The Dar Hell, as galactic overlords, are set up as uber powerful, but they have uh, the Aldenata have messed with their genetics, and so they've screwed them up to the point where they. Because any time that they go uh, get too angry or too destructive, it triggers uh, a poison in their own systems and, and it kills them. But they've done a really good job at still getting around that to dominate the Galactic Empire. So, uh, it's fun story, fun backstory, fun setup. Um, Callie is set up as the universe's top assassin. Considering Hemet don't kill people, you know, she's as good as it gets. Uh, they have access to galactic technology. They have access to the slab, which is a regen tank, but on steroids. You don't have to spend more than a few minutes in the tank and it completely resets your DNA. Uh, the completely other level, which is frustrating uh, logically because I, I understood why people that found out that the slab existed in the previous series wouldn't talk about it because the Dar Hell would kill you to hide the secret that this technology exists. But the Baden She also have access to them, and it kind of bugs me that, you know, at what point, as enemies to the Dar Hell, do you make that technology known uh, to the population, to, to the Empire, to the, to the Indui? I'm assuming it'll work for Indui and other, other races. Uh, definitely humans. I mean, that would be huge to find out that, that there was technology that would, you know, make you young. And that the concept of that does play a part in the stories and is addressed. But uh, it makes me wonder where the bait and she have access to it. You know, that wouldn't play out differently. I'd have to think about it. I'm not sure. Uh, but Callie has access to it, and the big thing with her is, you know, makes it so that she can be anybody, uh, become the world's, you know, the, the woman of a thousand faces, really good for an assassin, you know, somebody catches you on a camera, as long as you make it back to the slab, you know, they'll never see you again. So, fun concept, uh, cool sci-fi concept. Uh, this book does crank up the uh, explicit uh, rape and sex and torture and violence a little bit over some of the other books. I mean, all the books, all of Ringo's famous for, you know, extreme violence, which, which yeah, I personally love. Uh, gets a little bit more explicit with the sex. Uh, I believe that there was an interview one time where he uh, explained he's he's got the Ghost Paladin series I think it is how that they get really explicit and he said that it makes money. Uh, adding that into the books, when you're old like me, it detracts. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. What will happen next in the story? Uh, me, younger, and most people, it sells books, so I can't fault the logic. Got to give it to them. So just be aware. You know that uh, that that that's definitely taken up a notch in this book. That makes you want to go buy the book more. You know, bonus for him making some more money. Uh, if that's the kind of thing that 
uh, offends you, you know, you probably want to skip this series. Probably want to skip a lot of the series. Uh, but overall, if you like the Fosling series, if you like military sci-fi, really well done. This is a continuation, spin-off. Directly looks at the, the O'Neill clan and the Baden Shi and their fight with the Dar Hell. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. I loved it. I, I've been through it, I don't know, four or five times now. So uh, I want to share this last time with you and let's get going. Uh, I'm going to give the spoiler alert at, at this point. Uh, no more generalities. I'm going to get into some specifics. Tell me what you think about, you know, my ideas and what your thoughts were on the book as we go through. Uh, the book starts out with Callie stalking and going to assassinate Worth. Worth was number one uh, wolf. He was the number one uh, assassin killer for the Dar Hell that they'd hired to do their dirty work, you know, where they can't do it directly. Uh, he's a good character, and Callie goes after him, and the team goes after him. She lets him pick her up at a bar. He gets her in his car and gets her back to his place. Everything's fine up until that point. And then she lets him actually uh, chain her up and, and uh, handcuff her. You know, at this point, you know, he then proceeds to, you know, rape, torture, interrogate, trying to find out. He assumes that she's an assassin after him. Uh, he brings in another friend. Uh, the torture continues. Very graphic, very violent, which is fine. Um, until they determine, you know, she, you know, doesn't doesn't break. You know, it makes me think that, you know, the slab must have gave her nerve deadening. I think it's trying to set her up as just, she's just that tough. You know, she, she's just that professional. <sighs> I don't really like that in reality. There's a reason that spies have suicide spills. You know, no regular human can actually take that level of torture. Uh, the, the you know they they will speak you know but she doesn't and then they finally go to release her to kill her and dump her body which was kind of a convenience that they released her before they were gonna before they killed her and so she kills them and then the rest of the team Papa and Tommy come storming in right after she's killed them Ugh. so I didn't really like that part. You know, the conveniences, they happen. One or two in your book's fine and pushes the story along. But for the team to show up right after she killed them uh, was a little frustrating. And what really bugged me was she just killed them. You know, I was waiting. You know, she let them chain her up, you know, so that she could be tortured. And I was waiting for some reason why. It explains in the book that, you know, she wasn't supposed to be the trigger person. But I don't know why she wasn't supposed to be the trigger person. If they were just going to kill him, why didn't she just kill him? If they wanted to get him back to the apartment and kill him to find the apartment to search through it, as soon as they got to the apartment, why didn't she just kill him? I never understood why she allowed herself, you know, because obviously she did allow herself. She had the ability to kill him at any time uh, to be bound up and then tortured. So that, that, that bugged me. Once again, I'm being nitpicky. Uh, but it does establish that she's a, the super spy. You know, you, she can take pretty well any level of torture. Uh, I'm going to assume logically that the slab has made it so that, you know, she has control over her nerve endings or their nerve endings are deadened enough. You can take that level of torture. Either way, it sets her up as the super spy. And that part's cool. Uh, Tommy's been brought into the Baden She. That's I, I love that. Uh, other members of the team, Pop O'Neill, of course. They get back. She gets cleaned up, and when she gets back after this uh, torture session and killing Worth, she's slipped some information that some friends of hers from the previous series, uh, one of the uh, the traitors that betrayed them and got them killed, is still alive. And the, the Baden, she knew about it and was hiding the information from her. And she reacted, you know, like, like a, a normal person would. She was pissed. And I, I love that aspect. That she's just like, well, and, and Ringo and, and uh, 
Julie uh, address down chain loyalty, you know, which is a necessity, uh, especially for humans. And that, that becomes one of the major plot points in this book is, you know, the, the, the aliens only have up chain. You are faithful to your clan. You are just, you know, a fingernail. You're, you're just a piece of hair. If the clan needs you to, to gone, you just kill yourself. You know, that's, that's your life. And humans don't work that way. I mean, one of the most stark examples I ever had of that in my life was a, a friend of mine was talking about how in Desert Storm, their lieutenant walking through a minefield told them that it was a minefield. Lieutenant says, no, we're going through here. Ordered them through it. And how... Uh, you know, after the order and after they started across the minefield, you, act, you audibly could hear safeties being taken off of personal weapons. If somebody in, in that platoon got killed, the lieutenant was not coming back either. You know, you can't just expect humans to follow you blindly. You know, there are consequences. Major part of the story major part of this particular section. I, I love that part. Callie finds out that they're holding the information from her. She goes, she looks up the information, she checks it out herself, she finds that, and, and they put it right on the line in the gray area. You know, that uh, he is still on a targets of opportunity list. So she knows that he's not supposed to be on it, but that gives you your, uh, it gives you your excuse that, you know, well, I knew it, but you have to have him on the list. So, you know, I took advantage of it, you know, manipulating the rules uh, followed by the letter of the rule, but definitely ignoring the spirit of the rules. And uh, she tracks him down and she kills him, which was really well done. Uh, I, I liked how she did it and how she did it also kind of as a protest, you know, to kind of throw it in the bait and she's face. I'm pissed at you guys. You know, I feel that I can get away with this. I feel that the rules can be twisted enough that I'm justified in this. I'm going to confront you about it. But it's what, she, you know, set up in the book and is what's a really cool part of the story is, you know, she's thinking that she's dealing with humans and she doesn't realize how much, you know, killing uh, the, this traitor that had been left alive by the bait and she as an information source is seen by the Indui uh, as her killing somebody in th that was on their side and freaks them out that they don't understand down chain loyalty and how severe the the reaction is going to be from the Indui and from the aliens so it's a cool concept uh, I like how that there's a distinction he, he builds up how that they're you know, they are going to be thinking different. Uh, they're aliens. They don't get it. They don't even like to work with humans to start with, the bloodthirsty carnivores. You know, so when you do something to scare them, they're more willing to just, you know, turn their back on you and let you wither on the vine. So she goes onto the slab. She gets turned into Cindy Makepeace. Cindy Makepeace is the platinum blonde, you know, the wasp wasted, uh, over endowed. Uh, knockout, beautiful, platinum blonde killer. And uh, she gets, she infiltrates, they, ca they kidnap the real Cindy Makepeace. She takes her place to go to Titan base. And uh, it turns out that the whole scenario is a trap at Titan base. And they brought in Johnny Stewart to set up this trap and wait and see if an agent comes looking for this mole. Uh, she runs into him at, at the airport, going to be working with him. He, he's playing the bumbling, you know, second or third lieutenant. I think he's a full lieutenant, but uh, uncoordinated, you know, ha has the defects that uh, the, the, a lot of the jokes are made about second lieutenants to try and make himself look uh, less dangerous, less as, as a suspect. Uh, really good character, works out. Uh, and she's working for a, a general, they've selected General Bede. Uh, and he's 
the the philandering, chauvinistic, manipulative ass, uh, stereotypical, you know, Hollywood executive that takes advantage of his power and his position, except he's in the army. Uh, horrible person, horrible leader. Uh, he does have some qualities in the sense that he realizes that the AIs are spies, so he does everything out of his office by paper. Uh, but they've set up the Buckleys. Now that is probably my favorite character in this series. The Buckleys are PDAs that are not quite artificial intelligence, but the character from the Postling War series, uh, Sergeant Buckley, Lieutenant Buckley, uh, somehow, somewhere, they've got his personality downloaded, and he's the basis for the PDA systems for this semi-human-made uh, AI system that all the PDAs run on. He's pessimistic, and he's depressed. So imagine your PDA having a, a personality of utter depression. The, basically, he's like the robot from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, really fun character. And so Bede wants everything done by hand and won't even use a Buckley. He knows the AIs are, and he, he assumes, assumes that the human tech also is. Probably not that dumb, because the AIs are more powerful, so logically they would be able to infiltrate the, the, the Buckleys and, and still steal information. So he's not a complete idiot, he's just a horrible, horrible person. Well, uh, Callie gets into the office and she's there with Johnny. His cover uh, name is Price. She finds out that he has high enough clearance to get anywhere in the office. And so she starts a relationship with him, though it establishes it right from the start that she's actually attracted to him. And she doesn't understand why because his cover is really well done. She's thinking that he's just a young you know, she's 50 something and he's a 20, she's thinking he's a 20 something bumbling idiot. But something apparently comes through in, in his personality and his force of personality. And, and she actually does fall for him. But that doesn't stop her from cl completing the mission and using her uh, n new looks and her new abilities to seduce him and to use him to try and get access to the different parts of the office so that she can get the information. And, and it comes to a head when she actually does use his access and gets the information, she finds out that Jay, one of the people on the team that are actually there at Titan Base to extract her, is the mole. And then a whole bunch of conveniences kind of happen at the same time, which is the way stories are built. Like I say, a few of them are fine, uh, but, but a few of them do happen to get the plot to move along. In the sense that she finds out, and then she tells Buckley, you know, the mole has given the information to Fleet Strike, and Team Conyers back on Earth is about to be killed. And so she says, send out the information now. I know that, you know, when we send this out, it'll be detected in the building, they'll be coming down on me. But it's worth my life to try and protect the team. Uh, which was cool. Uh, which makes you like her character and, you know, makes you hope that, you know, she can save Team Conyers. Price, or Johnny Stewart, you know, immediately gets the message, hey, a message has just been sent, the data has been, came out of your office, and he realizes that the mole he's looking for is, is this send to make piece, is this Callie in disguise that he's actually fallen in love with. He goes to confront her. And you're like, uh-oh, you know, lover's spat. You know, what are they going to do? What's going to happen? And then the convenience that, you know, I don't know why General B came back at that particular moment, but he shows up. And he find, he catches them at that moment, Callie and Price or Johnny Stewart, and he shoots, shoots Johnny, gut shoots him, and tries to kill him. And I just wanted to say, why would somebody that had lived, you know, over a century, had worked themselves into a, a, being a, a flag officer, uh, into a general, throw away their entire life over a mistress? But on the other hand, 
there is so much of that exact thing happening in history over mistresses uh, that, that it is within the realm of believability. I have to give it to him. Him showing up was a convenience, but him shooting Johnny and throwing his life away, you know, that, that's actually a very realistic thing to happen, even though it's dumb. But uh, Bede is an idiot and a jerk underneath. So uh, believable that he shoots Johnny, you know, and then Callie kills him, unloads the gun on him. That was cool. But the problem is, is at this point, you know, Johnny's dying. She doesn't have any hyperzine. The guards are coming. And so she has to make the choice. Do I save Johnny or do I get myself out of here? And she st stops and saves Johnny. She stays, saves Conyer. She sa saves Johnny. Uh, it made her love her character. You know, it, it was the cool, heroic thing to do. But she's captured. And then, of course, you know, because she's captured and it's the Dar Hell running things, you know, they torture her. And it's another, even worse bout of torture, you know, that was established, you know, at the first of the book that she can take it. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're just like, damn, she's screwed. But Tommy is also on the team. And Tommy is another character from the previous books, The Postling Wars, that worked with Johnny Stewart. And at this point, he realizes, you know, he remembers, you know, Johnny Stewart becomes more, you know, this guy is, uh, was the plant, was the guy searching for us. And Johnny takes a hard look at him and realizes, I know this guy. This is Johnny Stewart. And they're just like, you know, how are we going to get Callie out? She's in this really high security. And Tommy's just like, you know, we, we can try and turn Johnny. Uh, realistically, an extremely dangerous. I mean, it's been 40 years since you knew this guy. You are completely different people. But at the same time, you also got to, you know, if you're, that there comes a point where you just say, we're burning the place down. We're going to try. And so they do. Tommy gets all dolled up in his triple nickel um, uniform and goes and confronts Johnny Stewart and tries to get him to, to turn and help him. Explains what's going on, who they are. And Johnny, instead of, you know, just picking up Tommy, stops and thinks about it. Tommy apparently must have done a good job at proving to him who he was and explain the story and Johnny knew, you know, when he was watching the torture of Callie, I mean, it says that he had to stop the other lieutenant from throwing his career away to try and step in and stop the dar hell. You know, Johnny just knows the realities of it that, you know, you are, you know, the Inca Indians and the dar hell are the Spanish conquistadors, you know, yeah, you've got the ability if you can get everybody to work together to, you know, just annihilate the Dar Hell. But get, the problem is, is when you start to organize to get everybody together, the Dar Hell kill you before you can get organized. So he, he understands the realities of the situation. And so he's given this opportunity, you know. You, per, you pretty well have to come in. You, you have to turn on Fleet Strike and your career and your life and come in with us if you want to help Callie. You know, because the it's set up and he's a hero of the book and Callie's a hero of the book, you know, you think he's going to do it, and he does do it. Uh, but it's a dangerous situation. And the reality of it is, you know, it, it, Tommy really put everybody in danger trying that. But like I said, you know, sometimes that's the Hail Mary you got to try, and Tommy does it. And it's kind of cool. So he brings him in. The uh, Papa and Tommy, uh, Tommy killed Jay. Uh, when she sent out the message, you know, it went to out and got, you know, the counter message got to Jay telling him that Jay was who the mole was at the exact same moment. And they were sitting in a shuttle outside waiting. And so they ended up fighting. And Tommy is this huge muscular guy, killed Jay. You know, the, they do check in with the rest of the Baden she and O'Reilly and a uh, they do a little bit of their own, you know, outside the spirit of the, the rules, looking at the letter of the rules and asking them questions. Uh, 
does this have to be done now? There's no, we can't wait. And they're like, yeah, we got this out with this window right now. And they're like, well, we're going to approve it, you know, by the Baden she, uh, which turns out that, you know, they're getting pressure from the Baden she to cut these guys loose and to not help them to let them die. And for a lot of the Baden she to let Callie die would actually be the answer for in their minds, having an insane agent. But O'Reilly and, and uh, a Lule manipulate things. You use the, you know, the, the, they they use the letter of the law to thwart the spirit of the law, and, and approve the mission. So the the rest of the Baden she are still going along with it, uh, because they can't probably even can't fathom, but they don't realize that they've been thwarted. Uh, so they set things up, and Callie's in uh, interrogation being tortured. She's dancing in the interrogation. There was another part that kind of I didn't quite understand. She's dancing to wear herself out because her body is this super body that will regenerate and heal itself rather quickly. And so she's dancing to wear out and use up her energy reserves so that she can die. But while she's dancing, she's unrestrained. There are lots of ways in a large room, you know, uh, without the mouthpiece, without the straps, with, without being restrained, and you know, you could kill yourself. So I'm not sure why she's dancing to wear out her reserves so that she'll die quicker under torture when if she wants to kill herself, she could just kill herself. But, yeah, I, I might have missed something there. Uh, you, you tell me um, the, uh, where I'm mixed up on that. But, uh, I mean, obviously she's not killing herself, so I have to go on the assumption that she's, you know, she's wanting to live. She's waiting for a rescue. She's still holding out hope for a rescue. Uh, which, you know, is being worked in the background and Tommy's trying to get things and they pull Johnny in and Johnny does show up and they have a no name pill, which is your zombie pill, which um, makes your body look like it's completely dead. So that the if you do the pill right, medically, they, they think you're dead. It stops pretty well all your body and your brain function. But somehow it stops it in a hibernated state, so you don't actually die. Apparently, don't actually suffer brain damage. And Johnny Stewart slips it in, and, and uh, he tells him that he's going to play good guy, bad guy, and, and he goes in and gives her a kiss and slips the pill into her mouth. And then after it, he immediately, you know, stops playing good guy and makes her angry and runs away. I mean, it works, and it's done well enough. I was expecting him to try a little bit harder on the good guy. Oh, please, please, you know, give us what they want. They don't want to hurt you. A little bit more of the Ramsey Bolton on the play it out a little bit longer on, you know, I'm going to be the nice guy. Help us. Uh, maybe he was afraid that she would actually become confused. He doesn't know. So, I mean, I... The switch happened really fast from good cop to bad cop, being the same cop. But he gets, the important thing is he got her the pill. And he got her the pill in a way that, even though it was a quick switch, it was plausible enough that it probably won't be questioned for a little bit. The pill puts her into a zombie state. They think she's dead. Uh, that They send for the, the morgue guys, which is this huge guy and this little redhead. You know, it's Papa and Tommy, which is kind of funny. They show up, and luckily they just killed Jay, so they cremate Jay's body, put his ashes, switch them out for Callie's, sneak her onto the ship, uh, get away. And then there's a bit of a twist, or Johnny, you know, decides that he wanted to help Callie because he actually did have feelings for Callie. He feels like a traitor going over to the bait and she. So he goes his own way. He makes contact with the, uh, it says the Tong. I'm unfamiliar with the Tong. Um, if that's a real uh, Asian 
Oriental uh, Mafia organization or not, but uh, he, he decides to join them instead of coming into the bait and she. I don't know why he would do that. I guess it's a personal decision. I mean, that's fine. You know, uh, real humans and characters are allowed to go different ways than, you know, what we might think that would be expected. And, you know, it works. It, it, it's kind of cool. You know, he sets him up as he is a little bit different. He's not fully committed to the bait and she. He's obviously fully committed to Callie. Uh, obviously committed enough to Tommy to trust him. But he's, if he's going to leave Fleet Strike, he's going to do it another way, way that he feels a little bit better about. So a little bit of a twist. I kind of like that. That was a cool part. Fakes his own death and kind of messes Callie up, but it kind of makes sense because she had to think he was dead also to make the convincing story with the Baden she that he's dead if he's going to disappear from both the Baden she and Fleet Strike. And at the very end of the book, he does catch up with her on Moonbase, which I guess you just have to assume that he had enough information that he knew he could find her there. It's within the realm of reality. It's within their own possibility, so, you know, that's what he did. And, and so, you know, that's where the book ends. Uh, like I say, it's, uh, the book, you know, it, it, it's not one of my favorites. It's uh, not as good as Live Free or Die or, or Hell's Fair. Uh, but it was a good book. Had some fun characters, fun story, you know, uh, a lot more sex, uh, more torture, you know, about the level of Ringo violence. Uh, tell me what you think. Uh, uh, tell me where my, my thoughts, you know, or I missed something where uh, there was an explanation of the book or why uh, something that confused me in the plot uh, shouldn't have been confusing and actually would have worked out that way or, or better or, or places that you didn't like. And, and uh, you know, keep it adult and courteous. Um, uh, things that you didn't like about the book and why. Uh, those are the kinds of things that I love to, to discuss and to think about when I read the books and hopefully to share with you and hopefully to learn from you. Well, thanks for your time and you guys have a good one.